Hello, welcome. Today, our topic is ensemble methods. Till now, we have been working with one monolithic, smart and complex classifier or regressor. What are our options when we want to look at multiple, a collection of classifiers or regressors? The program is that I will provide first the intuition behind this technique, and we will study three main techniques in this ensemble learning techniques umbrella, bagging, boosting, and random forests. Consider decision trees. Decision tree provides us a nonlinear regressor or classifier. It's very good to tolerate listing values. It can handle mixed feature types, numeric, categorical. It's very interpretable. However, the disadvantages are that larger a tree grows, it's more specific to the training examples, which means it's prone to the overfitting issue. Even though the bias will be lower, but the variance will be high. Shallower decision trees may provide underfitting, low variance, but high bias. Usually, we use this plot to characterize the generalizability of a classifier. In case of decision tree on x-axis, we put the complexity of the decision tree in terms of its depth and number of nodes. On y-axis, the error it produces on training and test data. The red curve shows the test error and the blue curve training error. We have seen this phenomena that most of the classifiers, when we increase their complexity, on this plot, there is a point where the complexity is just befitting. If we increase the complexity, the difference between test and train error increasing. That increase in test and train error, we call it overfitting. On the other hand, if model is less complex, we call it underfit. We also used bias variance vocabulary to characterize the performance of a classifier or regressor on training data. Usually there are four situations that we come across, high variance, high bias, low variance, high bias, high variance, low bias, or low variance, high, low bias. Situation four is the one that is desirable. Most of the times with monolithic, more complex, larger classifiers that have many parameters, it is hard to find the balance between variance and bias. Here comes the ensemble learning rooted in very old intuition provided by Francis Galton in his paper, The Wisdom of Crowds. He proposed that many naive learners will outperform one very smart learner. A similar argument is presented in an other book, The Wisdom of Crowds by James Srawick, where he identifies that crowds can make smarter decisions as long as they hold true to these four principles of ensemble. Ensemble should have diverse components. All components should be independent, decentralized, and there should be a mechanism to aggregate their opinion. How do these two intuitions come into play when we talk about machine learning models and their complexity? The first technique that we want to study is bootstrap aggregating or bagging, proposed by Leo Bremen in mid 90s. Here he explains that bootstrap samples are created from the main training set, such that we have repeated random sampling with replacement and we create k sets that are as large as the original set, but some of the examples may be repeated in each set. You can consider it as having 100 boxes and throwing darts on those boxes. So some of the boxes will not receive any dart, but some of the boxes may receive more than one. So you repeat this process k number of times to create k sets. Each of these bootstrapped sample set is used to train a classifier. So roughly 37% of the examples in the training set 
will not appear in a particular bootstrap training. There is a use for those 37% that we will discuss in a moment. Let's call them out of the bags examples. Now we train a independent separate classifier for each bootstrap sample. After training, if it's a classification problem, we take majority vote. If it's a regression problem, we take average of all. Empirically and analytically, it is seen that bagging will improve accuracy for many learners, such as decision trees and neural networks. Remember, during the bootstrapping process, we had some samples that were not in that were not selected in a particular set, bootstrap set. Those samples we can use to calculate out of bag error. If we consider those out of bag samples, which are not selected in a particular set as our test data, and we use those samples to average the performance of only those classifiers that did not see those samples in their training data. Then a subset of these K classifiers will become out of bag classifier. The error on that out of bag classifier will have strong power to estimate the generalization ability of the overall ensemble. Again, for every out of bag example, we aggregate predictions of only those predictors who did not have this out of bag example in their training data. Empirical evidence shows that the out of bag estimate is as accurate as using a test set of same size as the training set. Therefore, using out of bag error estimate removes the need for a set aside test set according to Bremer. One interesting thing to note is that Bootstrap aggregating or bagging will not improve accuracy for stable learners. A learner is a stable learner if change in the inputs or the parameters, small change in the inputs or the parameters of the learner do not produce large change in the outputs. So bagging is going to improve the performance of instable learners. Instable learners are what the ones, if we change the inputs a little bit or the parameters of the learner a little bit, they're going to exhibit a large change in their outputs. Such instable learners are going to benefit more from bagging. Again, the vital element is the instability of the prediction method. By perturbing the learning set, if it can cause significant changes in the predictor, only then bagging will improve the accuracy. Now you might ask, what kind of learners are unstable and what kind of learners are stable? Empirically, classification regression trees, neural networks, and subset selection in a set of variables using linear regression algorithm are considered to be unstable. On the other hand, KNN regression or classification is a stable learner. Priman provided an experiment to prove his uh, uh, point of view on this uh, data set where we see that misclassification error is reduced considerably compared to the one large uh, decision tree. So ES is for one large monolithic decision tree trained on these data sets. And the error is 29.1 for waveform data set. But when we apply bagging, the error reduces to 19.3. That means 34% decrease. And we can see the same effect on other data sets. Not only improvement in accuracy, but also the stability in terms of the standard error in the classification error is improved. You can see the monolithic decision tree, the standard error is 0 
but for bagging ensemble, the standard error is 0.1. The next technique is boosting, where we advance the ensemble technique by using weighted samples. So original samples are provided to a classifier, M1. This M1 is going to make some mistakes. So we create a weighted data set. Originally, all weights are same, but after M1 is trained, it is going to make some mistakes. So those mistakes are given more weight. Those examples that were not classified correctly by M1 will have more weight so that M2 model will be able to pay more attention to those examples. Still, M2 will be making some mistakes, so we will create a new set of weights for those examples that were not correctly classified by M2, and we go to M3, and so on. We train N models using weighted samples. The idea is a bit changed. We still use bootstrap samples. We still have weak base learners, like decision trees, but the data is weighted. Every next learner, we weight our data anew and provide next learner the data weighted data so it says that the new learner can learn only the examples that were misclassified by previous learner. So when we talk about boosting, we consider it as a sequential ensemble training method where different learners are incorporated into the ensemble sequentially to learn from the weighted versions of data. Again, more weight is given to the examples that were misclassified by earlier classifiers. Here you can see how a boosting classifier is learning a classification problem, which seems like quite difficult, differentiating between red and blue points. So first classifier learns this class boundary. Due to this class boundary, there will be many misclassification errors. So next classifier will learn this class boundary. And third classifier will introduce this class boundary and so on. So you can see base learners, they're simple threshold-based uh, one node decision tree learners. They're applied to one or the other of the axes. There are only two inputs here. And each figure shows the number of base learners involved in creating that decision boundary. The final ensemble is of 150 learners. The boosting algorithm of training ensemble of learners, it can be interpreted as a form of gradient descent in a function space. Again, Freeman proved this point of view and it was extended by Friedman who showed that how boosting could be extended to handle a variety of loss functions, including for regression, logistic regression, Poisson regression, and so on. One of the famous one is ADA boost. Here you can see on 23 different data sets, the performance of different ensemble methods is averaged. So ADA boost, decision tree, arcing decision tree, decision trees with bagging are compared with Neural network ADA boost, neural network arcing, and neural network bagging. You can see when the number of learners are about one, the, the error is quite high for all the CN tree and neural network based learners ensembles. 
as we increase number of ensembles up to 100, number of classifiers in the ensemble are increased up to 100, the error reduces for all methods. Notice that the CN3 error boost, which is this dotted line, approximates and comes very much closer to neural networks. So far, we have seen two ways of combining multiple naive, simple learners into a large ensemble classifier or regressor, bagging and boosting. The third way of creating an ensemble technique, third ensemble technique is random forest. Again, proposed and popularized by Bremen. In this technique, we build upon bootstrap samples. But the additional thing is that we try to decorrelate the performance of each decision tree in the ensemble. How do we do that? We not only create bootstrap samples, that means we randomly pick number of rows from original training set with replacement. We also randomly pick a subset of inputs, the columns of data. So every learner looks at a subset of the data, subset of the features. Providing random subset of input features to every individual learner decorrelates those learners by learning trees based on randomly chosen subset of input variables. In contrast to bagging, which simply reruns the same learning algorithm on different subsets of data, this way of training an ensemble will not result in highly correlated predictors because every predictor or learner is looking at a different view, different angle of the problem. Decorrelating the base learners is the key point here. Again, the out of bag error is as useful here as it was for bagging. We calculate out of bag error to have a fair estimate of the generalization performance of the ensemble. On top of that, random forests use out of bag samples to evaluate each input and create a ranking of the inputs and provide the, which input is more important than others to predict the target value. There are a bunch of parameters that we need to determine when we train random forest. How many decision trees will be included in the ensemble? How many samples we will, how many features we will sample for every tree? What will be the maximum depth of the decision tree? Other than number of sampled features, number of decision trees and maximum depth are also used in bagging. Let's recap. Bagging is an ensemble learning method that trains weak learners with high variance and low bias. It's usually considered to be superior for solving classification problems and usually we can include decision trees or neural networks or mix of different other algorithms in the ensemble. Remember, bagging is going to improve the accuracy for unstable classifiers, unstable learning algorithms. For example, neural networks and decision trees. Boosting, the idea is to train weak learners with low variance and high bias. It's a good choice for image retrieval and search applications. Both bagging and boosting take long to train. On the other hand, random forest can be easily parallelized and faster to train. 
The key idea for random forest is that it decorrelates predictions from learners. We see random forest applications in pools recognition in MS Microsoft Kinect. So this is all. See you next week.